episode two, two and then and and to chase geese. You will like this episode. <laughs> so today's arc will be about the Jedi crash and the defenders of peace. And this is the episode that involves the Scottish lemurs. Now, the Scottish lemurs are a great race of pacifists, and Sal doesn't like people who are pacifists. Shut up. Uh, personally, on his belief, speaking from him uh, as him, he doesn't believe that pacifism has any right in war. And uh, he's obviously <laughs> Anakin, and Anakin <laughs> agrees with this statement that, you know, you have to fight to defend your land, because people, whether you like it or not, people are going to come and they're going to trample over you. Now, me personally, I think that it's a good idea for him to stick by his beliefs because that's what he's been taught and his ancestors have been taught. However, his child does not believe in the same belief system, and that's where the conflict comes from. Oh, it's up to me now. Okay, well, first I'm going to tell you I like the episode a lot. Um, it has a couple of Jedi, that, well, one Jedi that I like, you know, a, a, secure, a Sakura, General Sakura. The blue she, lady. Yeah, she, she's the French... She's just got a French accent because the woman tweet. who played it was a, was a French woman, so it, I like her. I know because I like her because probably because like because because she's good. Mm. She and she uh, does like Anakin. I mean, she likes his methods. You know, when it, when it was asked at one point, you know, the general, one of the one of the clone generals, the, the, the admiral, uh, asked, you know, "Oh, Jedi as reckless as this," and she says, "Just the good ones." Uh, Which just, means not her, I guess, because she's not. No, reckless. she's pretty reckless. Because she made it back. Anakin's the one that didn't make it back. Well, well. Anyway, so so in this it's a two part. It's, it's a two part arc, and um, this one, I, I normally we bitch and moan <laughs> that oh it's too long. I thought for this time for the two arc right. it was fine. I know normally we complain, but this is how it is. <laughs> um, so I, I so if if you if so if so when you see it, it's got, it's got Ahsoka in it, and it's got uh, it's, got, it's got Sakura, and of course it's got Anakin. I think the, the cast was nice. I was really happy with that cast. Um, it was a good trio. Um, so you said if you put Obi Wan in there, it would have been I mean, better as could be as good as it could get, really. Um, so it opens up, and you, what you see is basically uh, a battle in space. And what it shows is is how unbelievably reckless, but correct, Anakin is. That is his reckless behavior. It's true, but it works because. It turns what was, at, truthfully, at one point, defeat. A losing battle. Lost battle. Into something of a victory, or at least not a loss. So, that's, you know, that's, again, so again, that you see him do that, and, you know, Soka starts to question, like, is that wise to do that? You know, so you start, and you haven't started to see, like, even the last few episodes, a little bit, here and there. But Soka's starting to question, like, is it wise to say that? Is that wise? But that, that translates, because she gets, that goes up. So by season like three or whatever, you're gonna start seeing her openly start start to look at Anakin with weird looks. So it's it's starting a progression. She's realizing that he is so out of the box, and that it's 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 over time it, it scares her. It scares the council over time. Um, but then I just you know I'm not gonna go into the council. So so uh, it's also a unique this episode really for other other reasons, which is. It's really the only episode I can think of where they really actually talk. I mean, it's only a few lines, but they really do talk about uh, the the relationship between the master and the and and, and the uh, the Padawan. You know, where Sakura admits to to Ahsoka at one point. You know, that her master at one point was you know, was just was just like a father to me, but she realized for the greater good, she had to let that go, and that was the right choice. But it was hard. So she understands, because in this episode, he's injured. Uh, Anakin gets injured because of his actions. And several times you see that Ahsoka's there, and she won't leave him. She will not leave him. She has to be coaxed to leave him twice. Once in the ship, and then once when they're on the planet. She doesn't want to leave again. But she's still, you got to leave. We gotta, cause we're, get, and, and they were right to make her leave, because they needed her to help get what they needed done. And it, it was correct. But yeah, you see this attachment she has. And, and again, and... Sakura so talks to her about it because she understands that that said the dorm is it's natural that happens that hap that's a natural thing that does actually happen between you know the master and the apprentice basically or the master and the, and the, and the, and the I should say the master and the apprentice but the master and and, and the, uh, the, the the Padawan but they never talk about their relationship in Star Wars really at all much how not it works the show or the... no not really so it's interesting that at least you get a few lines about it and how again how at one point one of them sees him like a, like a father to me that's huge. Especially given that, with, especially with with Ahsoka, 
her she was discovered by Tolkun, who raised her at least for a few years. That's why he calls her, you know, little Soka, because you know it was like it was like a little daughter to her in a way. So you can't, you know, that's a relationship. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, out Jedi that. That's a thing that's occurring. You have to deal with that in real terms. You can't just say, "Well, I'm a Jedi." There's there's real emotions happening. You have to deal with all that. So so you know so I so I, so I like I like that's the first part of the the episode. Uh, and I like I like it a lot. Yeah, you 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 go on. You you speak for a while, then I'll then I'll say something. Uh, yeah, I agree with what Sal said. I like that they talked about mentor mentee, and they also talk about uh, the benefits of you know fighting a war or staying out of a war because you know in World War Two, you've got Sweden, who is just absolutely neutral. And they're like, nope, can't do anything. We're gonna stay out of this war. And you know every single other country around in Europe is like, please, please do something. Don't just get invaded. Don't like stay there while people are suffering around you and they just say hands are tied we're out of this you can't do anything to us and i saw similarities between once they actually get invaded in the latter part of the arc to uh i think you mean switzerland sorry switzerland my apologies sweden uh uh there's also parallels between them and the japanese invading china at the beginning because of the initial part you know china has like this fate and they're like okay well we're getting invaded right now Obviously, they're not going to, you know, terrorize us or pillage and rape, and of course, that's exactly what the Japanese army did for the first part, and that's what essentially created them into the Axis, and uh, there's just so much bloodshed that could have been avoided had they had their proper allies support them. Your sense of history is fascinating to me. Anyway, uh, uh, given that I'm a World War II guy, I'm a, but it's okay. You're okay. We'll go fit it out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, he's fascinating. Anyway, um, so so the second part, you really deal with the village itself and that it was founded by pacifists who got to get away from the war. And their stand is to be pacifists, that, that they don't want to be involved in the war, and that if they feel they can get away from it, somehow they won't be involved in it, uh, which is idiotically stupid. And, and my, my favorite word, idiotically stupid, Idiot. which it is. Uh, and I'll use Sweden in World War II, yeah, you relax. Sweden. Yeah, as as the example, Sweden in World War II was officially neutral, but it was surrounded by war. The Germans invaded Norway. The Axis, the, the Finland joined the Axis. Uh, Sweden's in the middle. Sweden had iron ore, had to sell to the Germans, uh, and it did that, and it helped the war effort of the Germans, uh, and it did that partly because it wanted to stay out, but it had to make a deal with that. It had to make a bargain with the Germans basically to stay out. We'll, we'll, we'll keep selling you iron ore, and so that's. That's a less a less a relationship which is based on kowtowing to the Germans in this case. And when they when the when the people come in when the when the, when the separatists come in, the the villagers have to kowtow to them the same, I guess in the same way. And that, and that they they're expected to just do what they want and, and officially they'll leave them alone. But they don't really leave them alone in over time. And that's not going to happen. So in time, what's going to happen is they're going to they're going to keep going at them until they get whatever they want. And if they found they can get anything, then at some point they're just going to take it all. So, you know, what do you do? Well, you, well, in my opinion, you, you, you stand up. Somebody's going to hit you. You fight. You can't just sit there and take the abuse. Uh, so they're challenged by that. The fact that that well, we have to deal with this this reality that that, that we're being attacked. The past that is the past of his village, and that they have to figure out what to do, which is to which is to you know. To fight now, the, the old guy doesn't want to fight because he's a jackass. But uh, the younger people realize that you have to fight because we're going to be treated like garbage every time some any any tin pot buffoon just has to roll in here. We're gonna oh, we're, we're we're gonna have to just what we're gonna have to bend over and take up the ass every time. That's insane. That's an it's insane philosophy. So that's some kind of wacky you know kind of Buddhist nonsense. What I'm concerned. But that's <laughs> that's how it is. Um, so so you know they're forced to fight, and the Jedi. Uh, defend them, and I want to point that, which is interesting. Anakin does make the effort to fight. So initially they're going to stay out of it, but then Anakin, who was in charge, even though Sakura's that he's clearly in charge. Uh, he makes the and because because Sakura says, well, then they want to stay out, and he basically finds a way to say, no, no, we're 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 not going to let them die. We're gonna you know it's one thing to lead them to their beliefs, but we're not going to let them die, so we're going to go in there. And fight for you them. You can be pacifists in this corner. We'll defend Fight you. for them whether they want to or not. Exactly. But what I like about it is that it shows Anakin's character, which is that he's not really interested in whatever was thought of or whatever. He's going to do what he feels is right regardless. 
maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but he was going to do it anyway. So that's what he has his plan. And again, yeah, usually I'm, I'm an Anakin person, so I, I think it's fine. So there we go. So 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 there we are. So um, I give it honestly a five out of five. I think I give it a five out of five this season. Maybe I give it one. The first one. Uh, I really enjoyed it because I, I, the pairings were fantastic. I love the three pairings. They talk about things they don't talk about other times, and you see a lot of the the characters and what they do. And it also shows again that I think pessimism is dumb. Um, and it and it's it's just it shows that why it's you know it's stupid if you it's because flawed of philosophy in wartime because well, it was flawed philosophy anytime because if I know you're a pacifist and I can just invade you well then I'll just invade you I, I'll just tell you I'll tell you a simple you know if you go back to, to Tibet which is I know every every every, every liberal liberal white person's dream uh, for for their Buddhist nonsense uh, they think oh they're pacifist oh they're so lovely uh, they used to be warriors. They used to have a warrior culture up to about the 15th, 16th century or so, 15th, 16th century or whatever. Chinese left them alone. But then when they became more pacifist, Chinese later invaded. So, you know, you take your lessons from that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying build a massive army. But I, no, I'm not. I, but at the invade same, those without armies. No, but at the same time, you have to be able to defend yourself. Otherwise, I'll just pick on you all the time. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'll pick on him. You know, if he weighed twice as much as me, would I pick on him? Probably not. But he doesn't. I wait like almost twice as much as him. So do I pick him? Yeah, probably more, more than I probably should. But I do it anyway. See, so there we go. That's how it is. See, pacifism. See, see, was it does for you? <laughs> anyway, all right. So I'm giving it five out of five. I thought it was great. Oh, and one other thing, I thought it was very pretty. I, I thought the space battles were really, really well done. Again, they had a lot of different things they were showing, mm -hmm. and the planet was pretty. I thought a lot of the escapes were, were really nice looking, and uh, it was just really good. Oh, by the way, one, one, one trivia nonsense. The fort that the Separatists build, again, and it's part of their plan, was a classic Roman fort. The Roman legion would put down a fort with just four walls, exact, almost exact same way. It was smaller, obviously smaller, but 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 it was exact, just four walls, nothing else. And they would they would do that wherever they went. That was their camp. They would disassemble and put it up and put it up, because they're always trying to show a little bit that who was you know uh, this kind of Roman theme that they have in the show to show every time they want to show imperialism. They try to show, they make them Roman in this show. Like, if you remember a couple episodes ago, they wanted to show corruption. One of the Imperial Senate guards, you know, had very Roman hair and Roman, big Roman nose. And he had a, and, and, and so they wanted, they wanted to show corruption. So they, they use these kind of things back and forth when they want to show corruption and they want to show imperialism. Or they want to show different things. They bring these other factors in. So, anyway, that's all. So I'm done. You, you finish, finish what you want to say. I say four out of five for Scottish. Sounding lemur people out of five. Uh, it's good that the ancestors had their part, you know, tradition and whatnot, be respectful of your elders. And then they realized that the younger generation did want to stand up and they did want to fight because they were born into this uh, unrest. They weren't born in a time of peace, so they realized that they had to fight. And, and even in the first episode, they show that, you know, ostriches are killing troopers or ostriches are killing lemurs. And uh, they have to fight against things in that are aggressive in nature. So it's eventually going to come back to them. And I think he realizes that at the end when he says something like, at what cost? Because neither side is truly for the lemur people in the end. I thought it was a stupid line. At what cost? I mean, he wants, I mean what, yeah. do you, what do you want to do? He wants do? to be... Well, what do you want? I mean, well, well, yeah, he's. But what do you want? I mean, he, he you, sees the future. It's not good. For well, them. It's not good for any of them. They're in a war. What are you yeah, gonna do? Exactly. I just, I no. just, it just says, oh, what about price? What do you want me to do? There's a war on. It's across the galaxy. They saved you, but he's, they saved he, you. He's now you want to. Now you want to. doesn't want to say now, that. Now you want to bitch about it. <laughs> what do you want? Can you rather be dead? Exactly. If you and all your kids are dead, then I guess you're happy because well, you, you died with pride. You died with pride. Fine, <laughs> great, terrific. You won. You won. You've got a great victory of death. You'll be all dead now. Jackass. All right. Well, yeah. we're all done. That okay. was the men who chase geese. You did like this episode. The men who chase geese. Goodbye. Goodbye.